oof, I haven't made a video in a very long time. And part of that is because I haven't been reading that much lately. Um, I went to school to be a teacher. So the last four or five months of my life, I have been student teaching and working at the same time to pay for rent and such. So I've been just the busiest I've ever been in my life and um, exhausted. And I finally graduated. So I'm done student teaching and I have time to read for fun again. And I actually start a job on this coming Monday. Um, I got a job as a teacher already. I'm super excited. I didn't, I didn't read as much this year as I really, as I did last year or as I was hoping to, <sighs> just cause I've been way too busy. Since my last video, I have read a few things, a couple really bad ones and a couple really, really good ones. So um, my last video was, oh God, in like June and I had been reading the book, um, Strike Me Down by Mindy Mejia, I think is how you say it. Um, this is one of the only books I've ever given one star to. It was so bad. I do not recommend it. I actually was at Barnes and Noble yesterday and I saw it at Barnes and Noble and I was like, why is this even in this store? It was so bad. After that, I read a book called 14 Ways to Die by Vincent Ralph, which is a young adult mystery thriller. So good. I loved this book so much. I read it in one sitting. It's a really quick read because it is a young adult and I flew through it. It was, um, was it realistic? No, but it's young adult. So I tried to kind of put that to the side a little bit as to like, could this happen in real life? But holy smokes, really good if you're looking for a quick mystery. Um, my new job that I'm starting on Monday is teaching eighth graders. So I kind of like to be in the know of what the kids are reading these days so I can connect with them. My student teaching, I student taught seventh grade and this book is what everyone is reading right now, like all the, like the 12, 13, 14 year olds. Um, so I borrowed this from the English teacher at that school. I'm gonna read it, see what all the fuss is about. Um, but yeah, I do like to read young adult, especially since I will be teaching middle school so I can like connect with the kids on another level. Even though I teach, I teach science, I'm not, I don't teach English, but I love reading, obviously. After 14 Ways to Die, I read The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. <sighs> this book was really dark and confusing. And I think it was meant to be confusing because you're not, it's kind of like a Hamlet in that way of like, is he hallucinating or is this real? Basically, it's about these four friends and they, I think it was four. It's been a while since I read it, but um, they, are being haunted by some sort of entity that is very powerful and it's killing them off one by one. And it's called the only good Indians because there's a saying and it's really sick, but it's the only good Indian is a dead Indian. The title makes sense as to what is happening to these characters, but yeah, it's a little confusing. There are times where I wasn't sure what was happening, but I gave it four out of five. Um, on Goodreads, I, what I wrote was spooky and sad and kind of confusing, but overall a great book because it deals a lot with like identity of what it means to be a Native American um, in today's world and how people who leave the reservation um, are kind of looked at differently, I guess, or, versus people who stay on the reservation. One of the main characters marries a white woman and that's a whole thing. And um, it was really interesting culturally, I guess. I don't know a ton about Native American culture. I, I should. Then I read... Barefoot by Ellen Hildebrand. I read this in August. Gave it four out of five. Love Ellen Hildebrand. Was a cute beach read. She never disappoints with a cute beach read. It's kind of all I have to say about that one. Then I listened to the book In Five Years by Rebecca Surly, Searle. It was a very short book on the Libby app, which sometimes I tend to pick the short ones so I could read them really fast. Hmm, I gave it two out of five on Goodreads. It just, the beginning, makes you think it's going in one direction and then it, and then in the end it goes in a completely different direction and uh overall i just didn't really enjoy it i don't know if it's because i did the audiobook version or if it just i didn't like the story but in five years <laughs> and then i read the last thing he told me by laura dave um hmm my sister loved this book this was her pick for book of the month i believe in like july or august maybe and so I borrowed it from her and uh, 
very disappointed in this book. It could have been so good. And in the end, there was just no closure and it just sucked. I gave it two out of five. Mm, would not recommend that one at all. Then I read Normal People by Sally Rooney. I, I liked this book. I gave it three out of five. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't really great. Um, it is a show on Hulu. And I, I watched the first episode of the show and I never watched the second one. So that kind of just describes the book and the show in general. It's kind of like, eh. Basically, it's about a friendship between two high schoolers, a, a guy, girl and a guy, and they date for a while and they break up. But basically, it's about how they stay really, really good friends throughout the years. Um, and that's kind of it. I mean, it was fine. It was fine. I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. Then I read Still Alice by Lisa Genova. Three out of five, again. It was good, it was fine. It wasn't very in-depth. I didn't really get super invested in the story. It was kind of a quick read. Um, I know it's a very popular book. It's a movie starring, oh, what's her face? Julianne Moore, I believe, plays Alice in the movie. Maybe I'll watch the movie, I don't know. It was fine. If you don't know what Still Alice is about, it's about a woman in her 50s who gets early onset Alzheimer's. And basically it's about her rapidly deteriorating and she is a an academic woman she and her husband both do research and work at um like harvard i think like you know like big universities and so when she develops alzheimer's it's like it's, it ruins her life obviously but you know she she can tell in the beginning she's aware of it happening she's like i should remember this but i can't and then the farther you get into the book it's more like she's completely out of it and lost so it's really sad and it was fine I liked it. I would maybe recommend it. I don't know. So I was a student teacher um, in a middle school where we had like teams. So it's like the math teacher, science teacher, me, geography teacher, and English teacher were all in like the same pod. And the English teacher in my pod recommended me so many books. And um, the one of them she recommended me was called The Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian by Sherman Alexie. <sighs> I have a lot of feelings about this book. She said, so this English teacher has been a teacher for a long time. And she said, this book used to be part of a curriculum when she worked at a different school. <laughs> it's, it's a young adult novel, but with very adult language and themes, if that makes sense. This is the kid version of The Only Good Indians. It's about a kid who is destined for better things than his reservation. His reservation has a crappy school. His dad's an alcoholic. His mom sucks. And, but he goes to the white school um, 20 miles off the res. And a lot of times he has to walk to school because his dad's too drunk to drive him or his dad forgets to pick him up or something. This book was devastating and hilarious. Sherman Alexie, apparently this is a somewhat autobiographical book. I don't know how autobiographical. Um, I definitely recommend you read this and not listen to it on audiobook because there are pictures in the book that really help tell the story. Like like sketches, drawings. The character in this book is wants to be like a comic book artist. And um, I love this book so much. I read it in like two sittings. Um, what I didn't realize is that Sherman Alexie apparently is a horrible human being. And... Uh, has sexually assaulted or harassed or something lots and lots of women. So I have a hard time loving this book as much as I did knowing what a what an asshole he is in real life. But author side, I really enjoyed the book. I've never heard of it before. The tr absolutely true diary of a part-time Indian. 10 out of 10, I gave it five on Goodreads, amazing. So um, last December I picked out a book called The Holidays and I liked it, it was pretty good. Um, this. And I, I liked it so much that I, I decided again this December to pick out a holiday book for, for my, you know, pick for December. And I picked The Holiday Swap by Maggie Knox. Um, I love a good corny romance, but this was just not, not it for me. The Holidays is kind of like um, Groundhog Day, where this girl keeps reliving the same day over and over and over on vacation with her family until she gets it right. You know, this one was about two twins that are bakers and one of them works up in their tiny hometown in the family bakery and the other one's like a tv show host for like a baking competition and she gets injured so they have to switch lives because those tv show host twin is like up for a big promotion and she can't take the time off so they don't tell anybody and they switch places and it's just about how 
they both have a boyfriend and in the, the swap and then they have to swap back and it's a whole thing and it was just really unoriginal the whole twins trading places thing and it wasn't very well executed i gave it a two out of five um i would not recommend this book kind of a downer and then most recently i read everything we didn't say by nicole bart this was my mom's book of the month pick a few months ago wow i really 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 liked it i gave it four out of five i would even round up to 4.5 out of five uh, the only reason I didn't get five out of five is because I have read better books. It was really good. It was about a murder in a small town. And uh, this girl moves back to her small town. And through a series of flashbacks, we learn what happened that night. And it's really messed up. It was, it was really good. I really liked everything we didn't say. And that's all I've read since June was those little bunch of books. Currently I am reading, let me get it. This was my book of the month pick for September, The Neighbor's Secret. It doesn't have stellar reviews on Goodreads. Um, I'm on page 100. So far I'm liking it, it's okay. Um, we'll see how it ends. So far nothing really that crazy has happened. So what will I be reading in the future? Good question. I really do want to read the Scythe series. Um, my students loved it. So we'll see if I like it. Let me get these books for my friend. One of my best friends in the whole world, Megan, hey girl, um, she loves to read too. We both love, love, love reading. She has like a whole library in her house and stuff, but uh, she's into a very different type of books than I am. So we don't overlap genres very much. She's super into like fantasy. I'm not, I've, I've never really read fantasy and it's not because I don't like it. I just haven't really tried it. I guess the most fantasy thing I've ever really read was like the Twilight series, <laughs> you know? Or uh, I read the first book of Game of Thrones. So that's the closest I've ever gotten into fantasy. She's a huge fan. And I was at her house the other night and she recommended um, A Court of Thorns. And then she gave me also the second book in the series, A Court of Mist and Fury. She said it's like about fairies or something. And um, it's a really popular series. So I'm excited to read these. I'll probably read these next after I finish this one. And then I'll let let her know what I think. I'm excited to get more recommendations from her so I can expand. I read a lot of mystery, clearly. That's like all I ever read is like mystery, murder. So yeah, I'm excited to read those. I'm excited to start my job on Monday. Oh, also my hair is curly, hi. Um, So I have naturally very curly hair, as you can see. And since high school, I've been straightening it like every day. Um, I used to wear it curly every single day. And then in high school, I started straightening it more and more and more. Like I used to straighten it every now and then as like a fun thing, but then I kind of started doing it all the time. And then just since then, I've worn it straight every single day for like seven years. And I really like it straight. And um, the problem is I've been straightening it so much and for so long that it's gotten extremely damaged. So I decided another New Year's resolution. I'm going to stop straightening my hair. I bought a whole bunch of like curly hair stuff. I have a satin pillowcase now. I have rice water. I bought um, microfiber hair towels. I only diffuse it to blow dry it a little bit. Um, I'm just gonna let it be natural and see if I can get it to grow a little bit because obviously it's very short right now. If I could have like long curly hair, that would be fabulous. Um, but right now it's short and curly. Um, See so yeah, how this is the real me. Uh, it's a little wild. That's why I don't really wear it like this very much. But um, hopefully, and you know, by the end of the year, it'll be long and healthy again. And yeah, we'll just see how that goes. Um, I'm gonna go get my tires rotated now. Okay, bye.